this talk is about controlling custom made keywords using Sapphire. And I brought a custom made keyword. I mean, honestly, it's not custom made, it's IBM made. So that is not strictly matching the description. And my first question is who is a mechanical keyboard aficionado here? Oh, I see plenty of people that are interested. That's good. So I will talk a bit about my motivation for this project. I will shortly highlight some keyboard fundamentals. Then I will introduce you to the ZMK project, which is very nice. And I show you my proof of concept for controlling this keyboard and then the actual hardware I designed. And I will also give you the results of my Thing. So uh, also to mention, I'm associated with Grincentrics, but this is my hobby project. This is not what we do commercially. Um, so my motivation was, I want to have a nice boomer style keyboard for myself. And I mean, this is really the, the keyboard that was, <laughs> that was fancy when I was young. But also my motivation for this talk is to, to test the claims of the Sephir project. Um, if it's really true. And I mean, these claims are that Sapphire is highly config configurable, it's modular for flexibility, uh, provides easy cross architecture capabilities, has device pre support, and also nice support for the Bluetooth low energy stack. So let's see. I mean, I have it here live, but this is my object of desire. It's the IBM keyboard with 122 keys, also known as a battleship. And it reminds me of my time when I was a student and I was running an IBM AS400 as a night operator. Uh, and you can buy this stuff on eBay, uh, but it has the severe drawbacks that it comes with an archaic serial interface to the host, which I didn't like at all. First of all, for my motivation, I think I have some animations. I mean, look at these keycaps. On com compare this to this soulless implementation by uh, by Lenovo. So it's obvious why you want to have this kind of keyboard, at least for me. So coming to the keyboard fundamentals, um, I already mentioned we have 122 keys and you don't want to spend 122 GPIO ports to control these keys. So everybody uses the matrix. Um, and the idea of the matrix is that, for instance, you scan all the columns time after time and you observe on the rows where you get a feedback of your input whenever a key is closed. Like here, you power column two, you have this key A closed and it will show up in row two. Easy as that. Uh, but of course, for the modern keyboard, you want to have multiple keys pressed at a time. For instance, a shift key or the alt key, control key, which means you also have to the possibility to have two keys that are active at a time. Looks fairly simple. But what actually will happen is that you also open up a different path for the voltage or current, and you have what's called ghosting. It means you observe key presses where you actually don't press a key, and you want to avoid this. And when IBM designed this keyboard, they say, okay, there's an easy way to do this. Uh, we don't want to spend extra money on diodes or stuff. We just make a huge matrix. So the probability is that you have this ghosting effect goes down because we have lots of rows and lots of columns. So this keyboard has eight rows and 20 scan columns, which means we have 28 GPIOs we need to control this keyboard. So now entry, uh, I bought this keyboard from eBay and I said, okay, I can do this because I'm a seasoned embedded engineer and I know USB and stuff and uh, mm -hmm. How hard can it be? And I, I started with some research and I found, okay, I don't have to invent the wheel again over. There's this brilliant project, ZMK, which stands for Sapphire Mechanical Keyboard. And it 
this project was made to support exactly what I'm what I plan to do. Uh, the project was initiated in 2020 by Pete Johansen and a little side fun fact is he started the project using the STM 32 WB 55 uh, STM processor with the Bluetooth capabilities and he switched very early in the project to the NIF for his um, uh, as a as the most favorable processor, it's a very popular project. It has also two thousand stars on GitHub, two thousand forks, and also it's um, let's say a, a nice project where somebody used most of the features of uh, Sapphire in the correct way, and it's 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 really educated. <laughs> So, and this is maybe my piece of advice, whenever you start a Sephir project, look for sample code. <laughs> Don't start by yourself. Use some extra time to look for samples that are very close to whatever you want to do. And just copy it and make incremental changes. Don't try to start from scratch. And I mean, it's it's really the time you spend looking for samples is really worth the effort. So I looked into the ZMK project and there were already keywords that were similar to what I had. But of course, nobody had this huge amount of columns and rows. And you see, I had to use a very small typeset to give you at least a glimpse of how the device tree looks because all the positions in the scan matrix of a key always need an extra entry in the device tree for the key map. And I mean, maybe another piece of advice, um, don't try to type it in at once because you may, will make typos and the device tree gives you only cryptic hints where you did this typo and you can use, you can look a long time to find where you messed something up. And you also see down here, I, it's very easy to assign the scan rows and columns to the GPIO ports. So that was fairly easy and straightforward. Um, what we also need is in the device tree, we, de we define where we have switches at which intersections of rows and columns, and I need the key map to assign to these switches key codes or functions. And that is still very easy. With this keyboard, I also have to come up with this is what, what might be a good assignment of keys, because sometimes this is old school and there's, for instance, no Windows key. Um, which is not very sad because I'm using Linux anyway. Um, so I didn't spend much time thinking about that. Um, also, what I think is quite nice with the project is if you look at the main.c of the ZMK project, and I, I didn't have to do anything about this, but I think it's it shows a bit what's the goal of uh, setting up a Cephi application. And you see, I think I I attached a so <laughs> it's you don't see anything about the Bluetooth stack, you don't see anything about the USB. Uh, you don't see how how key press are somehow uh, beamed into these uh, interfaces. Uh, everything is handled implicitly in the initialization of this uh, modules. And this is what you have should have in mind when you design your Sephir project that you actually, you, you just have one business to do that's like running a, a keyboard and this should be reflected in the main. Everything else is modules and interfaces to modules. Um, so now that was the software part of this project. Um, 
that was the fun part. That was the hardware. I mean, the nice, uh, the first thing I found out was that I still get the flat flex connectors from from DigiKey. So this is they are manufactured like thirty years or so. I mounted these connectors to some experimental boards, and then I used a, a huge number of jumper cables to connect everything with a dev kit from uh, from Nordic. And yeah, I did a little bit of software work, and then everything worked fine. And I mean, it was really I used this on my table for like months, which is maybe an indication of uh, I trained my family not to touch things that are <laughs> resting on my desk. Um, and I made a first attempt to to make an, a hardware solution for this. Uh, and this is maybe a message to Nordic. So <laughs> this chip comes just in the in this QFN seventy three package. I mean, it's indicated; it's from the Nordic uh, website, and it's of course a nightmare for for makers. And but not with uh, with all the GPIOs I needed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's really, it really made me to, con I considered the STM because this comes in the QFN package. And that is, I mean, that was a nice twist that the ZMK project started with this processor, but I found no sample for the STM used as a keyboard controller. And this really stopped me from doing it because um, adding support for a completely different processor is not that easy in Sapphire. Um, so I used KiCad for the layout, as we do as hobbyists. Um, and I just made two mistakes. <laughs> I mean, here you see how I botched my crystal where I messed up the footprint. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I used these two pads and I needed to use this pad instead of this. Uh, and I had a, a small error in the mounting hole. Um, but in the end, I mean, this was easy to fix. And this is now the next revision or next iteration of this board. Um, I mean, it's Bluetooth and you want to be able to use it without any cable. So there's a um, rechargeable pack inside. And I decided for myself, I just tape it into my keyboard. Uh, so I think my idea was so I avoid, uh, so I avoid stress on this uh, delicate cells. And it's maybe it's it's not too hard to do. Um, but really, it's a complete drop in a replacement for the original board. So I need no modifications of this valuable keyboard. Um, and it works fine. So let me recapture the results. So what I achieved is full keyboard functionality via USB, the same for via Bluetooth, including power reporting. So I can also see how my battery is charged. Um, I can do firmware updates via drag and drop using a, the Adafruit bootloader. And also positively, I did no programming. I, didn't mess around with anything USB, Bluetooth. It was just using kconfig and editing the device tree. So this promise of Sephir is true. As I said, cross-platform interoperability is it's not something I would uh, risk my life on. Um, but maybe this is uh, something that we still can improve as a community. Um, in the end, some useful links. So I published this whole project in, in GitHub. ZMK is, of course, a very useful resource. Uh, if you are into mechanical keyboards, you maybe want to check Desk Sority for some nerdy discussions. Um, and I also attached my private email. So this is my email address. For instance, if you are interested in getting some of my PCBs that I didn't include it there. Um, 
And I want to point out that uh, Pete Johansson, the, uh, the mind behind the ZMK project, is uh, in a Sefia Tech talk, so that might be also interesting and uh, give you my, maybe new insights. So, any questions? Of course, I need to recharge it. It's not a perpetual mobile. Um, I mean, I must admit, most of the time I use a USB connection. My, I mean, it's on my desk and it's so easy to plug it in. And I was so far too lazy to come up with a pluggable solution. So it's always plugged into the PCB, as you might have seen. And there's always a cable dangling around and then I can also insert it into a port. So I have no reports on how long I can run this in a Bluetooth uh, battery powered mode. Can you uh, enforce some ghosting to it? <laughs> Why? Because you know where the phone Yeah, I mean, I know the matrix and I I can certainly enforce it because this is really, it's old school and they don't have any diodes and it will be possible to have ghosting, but never. it never occurs in real life. <laughs> uh, did you take it apart completely? So you know how it looks inside. Because I was surprised about this polyester oil. I would have expected a, a printed with a PCB. A printed PCB is very difficult. I mean, how are the switches connected to the to point? Here? I mean, but you. But it looks like. Uh, a, 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 so it's it's not possible to use a PCB because this steel plate is in a bow shape. So you cannot use a simple PCB because it will uh, it doesn't fit. And so they have these uh, flexible foils. Uh, I think it's two of them, and they connect at the uh, positions of the keys. I didn't take it apart because this, um, there's a plastic part that houses the key mechanics, and there's a steel part, and so these are connected by these um, plastic bolts. And you have to break the plastic bolts to, to take it apart. Real fanboys do it and replace the plastic balls by uh, some screws, but uh, that's not my level of uh, nerdiness. Any more questions? Uh, yes, it's uh, JCL PCB and they have an assembly service. And uh, I mean, obviously, you don't want to assemble this uh, IC by yourself. <laughs> and that's the reason why I have some PCBs left over, because they have a minimum size of five. <laughs> Any more questions? I think if this is not the case, I think this was the last official talk, and now we... Ah, you want to announce something. 